first thing I need to do to start the stereo removal process is in this little cubby. You need to just pull out this rubber insert. And then inside there is a single seven millimeter screw. Okay, and the next step down here on the lower dash under the steering wheel, you gotta remove this panel. And it's just clipped in. You wanna start from the top on both sides. Just kind of work it out. It came out easier than I expected. You can see there's just little clips here. Where it clips in, it's got this little hinge piece that just slides in there and it hinges up so when I get ready to put it back in that's how I'll do it slide it in and then just slide it back and snap it into place the next thing I need to do is there's two screws one here on the left side and one over here on the right side at the top All right guys, so after taking those screws out under the dash, next thing I need to do is remove this cubby. Some, some of the higher end Wranglers, this is where you have your controls for the power windows. And it's the same process to take it out. You wanna just get a trim tool and insert right around the edge and pop it out. Right, just like that now if you do have power windows as you pull the power window piece out there'll be a plug here that you're gonna have to unhook it's just clipped in so you unclip it and pull that out now without you can see there's one more screw there that we have to remove should be everything should be ready to pull this whole dash panel off so it's just clipped on now so you just want to kind of reach up here and give it a little bit of a tug mine's been off before so probably comes off a little easier one thing you might want to notice is over here it's going to be really tight so if you have your steering wheel raised up you might have a hard time getting it out so you're going to want to push your steering wheel down and lock it in place so that you can have room to get the dash off. All right, with the, the dash off, got easy access to the factory stereo, just four screws. These also should be seven millimeter. And go ahead and take those off and should be able to pull the radio out.
All right, just like that, factory radio's out. Um, one thing to note, make sure if you've got a DVD or, or not a DVD, a CD in there, make sure you take it out before you unhook it because you won't be able to get it out once you unhook it unless you re-hook it back up. But it's pretty simple. I mean, got your antenna, there's your main connections. Now, from what I understand, and I'm about to test it, make sure this piece here sits too low to put a aftermarket stereo in. So you have to trim it. It's kind of L-shaped. So you want to keep this part up here and trim this part to get your new radio to fit in. I've got my fit kit that I'm gonna get and get it all put together and ready to, to install. I've already done all my wiring connections, so should all I have to do is plug everything in. Okay, so if you look real close, these screw holes the stereo don't line up and that's because where I was saying this top this top bar right here is a little too low so I need to trim it just enough push it up to get those screw holes to line up so I'm gonna go ahead and do that now <laughs> So <clears throat> it's another day. I ran out of time the other day trying to finish this up. So I'm going to show you what I've done here. So this one here is the factory plug. And then this is the antenna. And this one's satellite antenna which I'm not using satellite. I could hook satellite up to this radio, but I have to buy another module and I don't ever use satellite radio, so I wasn't worried about it. And then this here is for the microphone for Bluetooth calling. Um, <clears throat> I've used this module here for maintaining the steering wheel controls. And so I bought this, this module came with this wiring harness. 
and so all I had to do was wire it to the actual stereo this one is for my backup camera that I installed and so I bought all this stuff from a uh, Crutchfield and Crutchfield makes it really easy if you've never never installed a car stereo before they they provide a with a wiring diagram that showed me this module all the different colored wires how to hook it directly to this stereo so it had a personalized wiring diagram on how to hook this up to this stereo by connecting the different colored wires makes it really easy and then after you get it all connected all you have to do is just plug it in so it makes it really easy so I've got it all hooked up and I've tested it everything works as it should I'm gonna go ahead and get it back in the dash finish up the install All right, so I just wanted to point out when you're tightening down these screws, you want to just make them snug. You don't want to go real tight. Um, if you try to tighten too tight, you'll just break this plastic for this fit kit. And then your radio will not be secure. So you just want to snug them down to where they're nice and snug and the radio is not going to go anywhere. So now all I have to do is just put the dash back together. All right, so putting this dash cap on is just the reverse of uh, taking it off. And the one thing you want to make sure is when you're putting it in that you line these up for your air conditioning vents to make sure that they uh, line up with these tubes you'll be blowing all your cold air inside the dash instead of out but it's really simple just slides back in Oops, my windshield wipers <laughs> so you can kind of see down in there you want to make sure those those tubes are lined up it's not hard just Kind of snaps it in place. Also, I didn't didn't show it, but uh, I've got the USB from the back of the stereo coming up from behind the dash, and this is what I'll use to plug my phone in for the CarPlay to be able to use all the apps on my phone. Like, <clears throat> maps app and itunes music app and amazon prime music and all of the other apps that i can use on my phone of course you can't use all the apps but there's uh quite a few i'll show them to you once i uh get the stereo installed or get this so the dash is capped back on and all i have to do is put these two screws back on on either side of the either side of the dash one right up in there 
one right over here and then I'll put a screw back in here put the little cubby back and then the one screw here and then put that little cubby back and that'll be it it'll be installed and ready to go All right, so I got those two screws in. I'm gonna show you how this panel goes back on. Really easy. It's got these little plastic hinge type things and just sit in there and then it just slips up and you got these flips that flip into the dash to hold it in place. Got the keys in the way. With this whole everything that's going on with the you know virus stuff, I haven't been driving a whole lot. So I've been having problems with my battery running down. So I've got the car running while I'm doing all this, trying to charge the battery up. <clears throat> but it's easy as that, snaps right into place. And I can push my steering wheel back down and lock it into place. And that part's done. Now the next thing I gotta do is put the screw here and put that little cubby back in. Let's go ahead and do that. Again, you don't want to tighten these down too tight. Just want them snug. And it snaps right into place. And again, if you have the power windows, you'll have to reconnect the little power adapter on the back of your power window module before you slide it in. But it goes in the same way, it just snaps into place. And the last one is this one here. Tighten it down. Just like that. All installed, ready to go. All right guys, hopefully y'all can hear me okay. I had to unplug the microphone to be able to plug in to the radio for the Apple CarPlay. But like I said, this this USB goes to the back of the radio, and then I've got just a standard USB to, to iPhone cable here that's plugged into my phone. And that gives me all the options for the Apple CarPlay, for the different apps. And you got Waze, um, whatever apps on your phone that are compatible will show up here automatically. I've got Pandera, Spotify, which I don't ever use, Amazon Music, Google Maps, iHeartRadio, you can listen to audiobooks, podcasts. Um, of course, you can make phone calls through the Apple, through the CarPlay on the radio. And I've tested it out, but it seems to be better quality just using Bluetooth. So you can connect to this radio through Bluetooth and through CarPlay. But if you're connected to CarPlay, the phone 
the, the phone call will automatically go through CarPlay. If you unplug the phone, then it'll go through Bluetooth, and the Bluetooth seems to be a little bit better quality. Um, but that's it. And then, of course, you have regular radio. I'm not going to turn it on because I don't want any copyright music on here. So I wanted to show you guys one last thing um, in case you haven't done it or need to do it. Part of this install that I did on the radio was adding a backup camera. And so I ran the wires from the back of the radio down through the dash into the wood behind the glove box. So now that I have it all done, I need to put the glove box back in. So it's really easy, similar to that other panel. It's just gonna, you got two little tabs here that go right here. And they just slide in. And then you've got these two pieces on the edge of the dash that hit the dash. So you just want to squeeze it until those are past the dash. And then they snap into place and that's what holds your glove box. And it just shuts like normal. Now that wire for the backup camera, I ran down behind the kick pad, behind the kick panel. And it runs in here and then I tucked it in underneath through here and then it goes comes out here goes under the carpet runs all the way back to here and the back I was able to pull this this panel back, it, uns it unsnaps right here and then kind of snaps apart. But right underneath here, underneath the carpet, there's a uh, rubber grommet where the wires run through going to the tail light. So I ran my wires for the backup camera through that grommet and then I was able to pull the tail light off by taking these two screws out, pulling the tail light out, and then you can reach down in there, and there's a drain hole in the bottom that's already cut. So I just stuck the wire for the backup camera through that drain hole, and then it runs along inside the bumper. And then my backup camera's right down here in the back bumper. And I put it down low like that because I wanted to be able to see my reheat my. Re trailer hitch ball when it's in there in the camera which it ends up being perfect so when I'm backing up to hook up my camper I'll be able to see the ball and the trailer be able to line it up perfectly using the backup camera what a lot of people do is they'll put their backup camera up here on the top of the third brake light and then they'll run their wiring down inside here and then there's a vent behind the tire right down there that you can stick the wire through and then you pull this plastic trim off and run your wire through here into the car i didn't want mine on the backup camera or on the third brake light for one i'm eventually going to get a lift it's a bigger tires and then this will have to be removed and replaced so then i'd have to move the backup camera the other one is like i said i wanted it low so that i'd be able to see that trailer hitch ball so i'm gonna put my trailer hitch ball on here real quick i'm not gonna connect it all the way just slide it in there so you'll be able to see If I 
turn the backup camera on. You can see I can see that trailer hitch ball right in the can, right in the screen. So it'll make it really easy to be able to back up right to the trailer. But guys, that's it. That's all I've got for this video. I appreciate y'all watching and uh If you like the video and like the other things I'm doing, uh, go ahead and hit subscribe, like, hit that like button, really helps me out. Hit the notification bell if you want to hear, uh, get notified whenever I release new videos, and share, share them with your friends. I appreciate you watching, and uh, see you next time.